Hi, I'm Sean, uh, co-founder and CTO at Cerebrus Systems. And at Cerebrus, we build this, the world's largest chip ever produced. So traditionally, each one of these die would be independent and not connected to one another. And that's fine because you would normally cut them up into smaller chips. In our case, we actually lay down copper wires that interconnect each of these chips using the same technology as if you were communicating on a single traditional chip. And it's these copper wires that allows all of these die to operate together as a single compute device and allows all of these otherwise independent dies to operate as a single large chip. Yeah, that's a good question. Even in the most mature manufacturing processes today, it's impossible to yield an entire wafer without any defects. You can see that in this picture right now, is that if you have a certain amount of defects with large chips on the left, you actually have more defective chips than if you were had small chips on the right. That's because every one of those defects causes an entire chip to be defective. And so typically in the semiconductor industry, as you go to larger and larger chips, your yield actually decreases. So today, most large chips use redundancy to increase yield. And the way you use redundancy is you build in redundant cores. For example, even CPUs from AMD and Intel, as well as GPUs from NVIDIA, all have designs that build in redundant cores such that if there are defects in any of those cores, they can map those out and the larger chip can still yield. And so redundancy is a critical capability in the chip industry to increase yield, especially for larger chips. In fact, this is so commonplace that even the highest end chips all have redundancy built in. It used to be that if you were buying the highest end part, it would be with every single component yielding perfectly. But as chips got larger and larger, it became more and more difficult to actually do that at a reasonable yield. And so even today, when you buy the highest end GPU, it actually has defective cores already built in. This is the reason why redundancy is such a critical capability to drive up yield in any chip company. Cerebrus is taking this to the extreme because if you look at our wafer, it's made up of 84 independent die, and then every one of those die, which is like the equivalent of a traditional chip, has over 10,000 small cores. And every single one of those cores is a fully independent compute core with its own instructions, its own compute, and its own memory. These cores are actually like the size of a speck of dust at over only 0.05 square millimeters each. And if you look at how that compares with a GPU core, the GPU core size difference with Cerebrus core size difference is just staggering. In fact, the GPU core is about the size of a grain of rice. And our core is the size of a speck of dust. It's over two orders of magnitude, a hundred times smaller than a GPU core. That's a great question because just having a, a large number of cores doesn't mean that you can survive defects. So we built defect tolerance into the architecture from day one. And we do that by actually designing in the hardware redundant cores and a redundant fabric interconnect that connects these cores. And so with this, when there's a defect, we can actually map out the bad core and then using the redundant fabric, as you can see here, we actually route around the defective core, all in hardware, so that when it's presented to the software and to the user, it's a fully formed 2D mesh 
array of cores with no defects logically. Yeah, so the defect tolerance is really interesting because one way you can uh, quantify that is by the amount of defective silicon. And this is where you start to see where these small cores start to shine. Because if you look at a large GPU and you compare that with the wafer scale engine, if you assume the same defect density, for example, 0.001 defects per millimeter square, on the GPU, that results in 59 cores defective, or a total of 361 square millimeters of defective silicon. Now on the wafer scale engine, because we have such tiny cores, we only have 46 defective cores resulting in only 2.2 square millimeters of defective silicon, or over 160 times less defective silicon because our cores are such fine grain. Because another way that you can measure defect tolerance is how many cores you can actually activate. Now with the architecture of using these small cores and redundant fabric, we can activate over 93% of our cores. In fact, that's more than even the largest chips today, such as GPUs. And this is what allows us to actually have yield at our entire wafer scale chip that is even higher than the yield of traditional large chips like GPUs.